Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my shop. Uh, if you're new, welcome. Um, today we're going to start part three of the Sysport build, which will hopefully be the final iteration of this little build project. So it's going to consist of me building all of the drawers. So I think we're going to have two up top, two down below, and I'm thinking probably six smaller drawers that, that are going to go here in the middle. Um, and this is uh, shop drawers, guys. This is nothing, this is not going to be anything fancy. In fact, I'm just going to be using, I have some primed pine that I'm using, one by six. So uh, it's not going to be anything fancy. I probably won't even paint them. I'll probably just keep them primed because, um, again, it's garage stuff. I don't really care. This is not going to be any, you know, interior grade drawers. Um, I'm not going to join them, not going to plane them. I'm just going to get them to work. Um, but I will slow down a little bit to show you guys who are, who might be new to woodworking um, kind of the basics of drawer box construction and how to install your hinges and how to line up and measure, you know, for all of your, your, your drawers. And there's quite a few small little things that I've learned along the way that have helped me out that I'd like to share with you guys. So um, we're going to start on the drawers um, and then we will go from there. And anyway, guys, take care. Thanks for watching and we'll talk soon. So... I'm going to show you how I prefer to measure my my dimensions of my drawer box. So personally, I like to eliminate having to use an actual tape measure as much as possible and actually using, say, a bar gauge or some other method to actually get the exact dimensions without using a tape measure. Because when you start to use a tape measure or rulers, you inherently bring in human error. So the way that I do it, is I've got my two drawer slides that I'm going to use for all of these drawers, but this is just for this one drawer. So two drawer slides, I put them together and I put them on the side. And then I've got a couple of pieces of scrap lumber that I'm using for my draw drawer slides. And I put those, so these are essentially going to act, um, if you can imagine these being the two sides of the drawer. They're just scrap pieces, but I'm using these to determine the width. So I just cut two pieces of scraps. I'm going to put them together and I'm going to lay them right next to the drawer slides. So this depicts, you know, the, the two slides together, you know, essentially is, is equal to one slide here, one slide here, and then the two pieces of scrap is, is essentially equal to one side of the drawer and one side of the drawer. I just have them all pulled into one side to make it easier for me. Hope that makes sense. So, and I use a bar gauge. You can use a scrap piece of wood and make your, you know, lay a piece of wood from here to here, make your mark. I just, I just, I have a bar gauge and I like it. So all I do is I put the bar gauge in here. I loosen it up. I bring one end of the bar gauge all the way to the end. And I push the other end to the side of the interior drawer box. I tighten it down. And make sure that, that you know that it is flush, that it that it is touching. So now that everything's tight, I know that when I take this out, the distance between here and here is going to be the front of my drawer and the back of my drawer. So I can take this bar gauge now and I can I can reference this end and this end, make my cut on my lumber for the front. In the back. I don't have to worry about measurements. I don't have to worry about sixteenths, thirty seconds of an inch. I don't have to be that precise because I have an actual measurement, so to speak, between this end and that end. And again, this measurement is going to be the front and the back of my drawer because I'm taking into account my two drawer slides, my side of my, and both sides of my drawers. So this dimension right here is going to be the front of the drawer and the back of the drawer, okay? So this is gonna be my material that I'm gonna use for my drawer boxes. So I've already squared up this end. This is the end that I cut to get the, um, the, the scrap pieces that I use for measuring how big my drawers actually need to be. So I'm gonna take this piece of one by, and I'm gonna take my bar gauge that already has the, the dimensions that I need. I'm gonna line up one edge, and I'm gonna mark the other edge. Okay. Now I know that 
this, I don't even know what, what size this is. I haven't measured it once, but I do know now that from this line to this line is the size that I need for the front and the back of my drawer. Okay, so now I've got everything set up. I've got my track lined up to the distance that I need to cut to make sure that the front and the back are the right sizes. I'm gonna line up my flag stop on my MFT. So now I can just knock out repeated cuts. So that's it guys. So for the top two drawers, I've got my front and my back piece all exact same size. Gonna make the drawers real easy to go in. So let's talk about how you decide how deep to make your drawer box. So we've already got the measurement for the, for the front and the back using my bar gauge. Now we gotta figure out how deep to make these drawers. So you can take your actual in, in dimensions of your opening, which in, in my case is I've got 15 and three quarters of an inch. I'm not counting this three quarter inch trim. I'm only measuring the actual carcass, not the trim. So that is 15 and three quarters of an inch that I have. Now my drawer slides are only 14 inches. Okay, so if you build anything, and these are full extension drawer slides. So if the side of your drawer box that you're gonna build is, is deeper than 14 inches, keep in mind that that part's not going to extend all the way out. It's going to be left back here when this drawer is fully extended. So if it's 15 inches, you're gonna have one inch of drawer space that doesn't come all the way out. That might not be a big deal, and it's, you know, in my case, it's not a big deal. So what I'm gonna do is, since I've got 15 and three quarters of an inch total depth here, I'm probably going to build my drawer box to be 14 and three quarters of an inch deep because I'm also going to be putting the way that I'm going to build these drawers that are going to be inset flush to the trim. So I'm going to, I'm going to actually build a drawer front to affix to the front of the drawer box. So you'll see when I go to attach my drawer slides, I'm going to inset my drawer slides by three quarters of an inch like that. And that's going to give me three quarters of an inch to put a false front drawer front on and have that false front drawer front be completely flush with the trim on the outside of this cabinet. So that'll make more sense when I go to actually install these drawer boxes. But so that's how I determine how deep I'm going to make my drawer. Again, I've got 14 inch slides. I'm going to make my drawer box 14 and three quarters of an inch deep. And that's going to give me plenty of room behind the drawer uh, to have a little bit of wiggle room. So the drawer box isn't going to hit the wall. If I have this pushed up against the wall, it's not going to hit the wall. I'm going to have a little bit of space behind the back of my drawer. Um, so it's not going to impede on anything. It's not going to hit anything. So let's get the sides of the drawers cut now. Let's talk about how to actually build the drawer box because there is a right and a wrong way to do this. And when I first started out in woodworking a long time ago, I didn't realize that. I just thought you just put all four pieces together however you wanted, make sure they were square and you were good to go. That's not correct. Um, but before that, I, I do want to say the, the very first thing in creating a drawer box that, that fits well and that's not going to make you insanely mad when it doesn't work is you first have to make sure that your carcass that you built is as square as can be. Without a square carcass, you're, you can build a perfect drawer and it's still not going to work because your carcass is out of whack. So really take your time when you're building your carcass to make sure all the corners are 90, everything's square, because if it's not, your drawer will never work. The way that you put a drawer together, um, and this you know is true 99% of the time, I'm sure there's gonna be people, people out there that say, this is wrong, but this is how I do it, and I haven't had a drawer fail on me yet. So you want to put the front and the back of your drawer inside your sides, okay? So if this is the front of my drawer, this is the back of my drawer, I want to put my sides on the outside like this. This is going to create the strongest drawer because I'm going to put my fasteners, however you want to create a drawer, pocket holes, screws, nails, dominoes, this method of attaching your, your fasteners coming perpendicular to your, your cabinet is gonna be the strongest, okay? Because you're gonna be pulling this drawer in and out and you want 
your fastener to be going in this way, okay? Not like, oops, not like this. If you put put your front and your back on the outside of your sides, you're going to be putting a fastener in this way. That will eventually fail after several, you know, years of pro probably years of pulling a drawer in and out. This will fail. Whereas if you put the front and the back inside your sides. This will never fail. This is sheer strength. This is not ever going to fail if you do it correctly. So put the front and the back of your drawers inside of your two sides like this. Now, again, I said there's, there's thousands of ways to affix these sides together. I'm going to be using dominoes. Again, you can use pocket holes. Whatever your, your cup of tea is, um, is fine. But just make sure that A, your carcass is square. B, you put the front in the back of your drawer box set inside of your sides. Typically, if this was gonna be an interior, more nicer piece of furniture, I would probably create a dado, a little quarter inch dado, all around probably half inch below the top edge. And I would use that to slide in a piece of quarter inch plywood or whatever the, the medium that I wanted to use to act as my drawer bottom. But since this is just shop furniture, I don't wanna take the time to do that. So all I'm gonna do is once I get the drawer box built, I'm simply just gonna measure length and width, cut a piece of plywood, quarter inch plywood, glue it and tack it to the bottom of it. Um, that's gonna be fine for this. I'm gonna get this marked up and install some dominoes and get these doors built. And that is how you do a domino drawer box. Uh, sometimes you gotta kinda force these things in because the tolerances are so tight, but uh, this, this drawer box isn't gonna fail on me at all, especially when I go back and put some glue on it. We'll be good to go. All right, so now we're at the point where we can start to install our drawer slides. So the first thing we're going to do is actually take out the runner and do that by, you know, most of you guys know this, but, you know, pull, pull up on this lever, pull out this section. I'm going to be using a three-quarter inch piece of MDF as a, as a spacer to lift this drawer slide up off the, off the base. So I'm going to put the spacer up against the side, and I'm going to set my my uh drawer slide right on top of that okay and these things are pretty greasy when you uh first get them so just watch out for that so i've got a vix bit on the tip of this and remember since i am going to be using a a, a, a false front on on my on my drawer i'm going to inset this hinge three quarters of an inch because that's going to be my three quarters of an inch is how thick my my drawer my false front drawer is going to be so I need to set this back three quarters of an inch, so I'm gonna use the same lumber that I'm gonna be using to build my drawer front as a spacer to make sure that I get the, the right measurements. So all I'm gonna do is use this as kind of a, of a gauge block, and I'm gonna get this the front of this flush with my trim. I'm gonna push everything up against it. Okay, so now that drawer slide is right where I want it to be. So I'm gonna take my Vix bit, Now I'm going to take a 5 8 inch coarse head screw. Okay. And then the same thing for the back holes. Okay. Now we can reinstall our slide. We're going to put the slide up on top of that of that spacer use our three quarter inch gauge block so to speak get that drawer slide butted up right up against the back of this
take out our spacer, put back on our slide, and that's how you install, install drawer slides, guys. It's, it's pretty simple. So now let's go grab our box, set it in. All right, guys, so now let's put the drawer box into the opening. So all I'm going to do is put a couple of quarter inch shims on, on the bottom, and that's just to lift up my drawer box a quarter of an inch to make sure that when you're sliding it, it doesn't catch on anything. So now we get to hope that it fits. All right, so now we're going to line up the very front of these slides and it's and it's good to use a little a block to make sure that it is right on the edge of it make sure everything's totally flush and we're just going to put a couple of pilot holes Okay, and now you just want to start slowly pulling the drawer out so you can get to the to the mounting holes. All right, make sure you take your shims out. And usually the first couple of times you, you got to work this drawer in and out. There we go. There's one drawer. So as you can see here, I've still got a three quarter of an inch space and that's gonna be perfect. Let's say this is a, gonna be a drawer front. I've got enough room to put a drawer front on the front and it's not gonna be sticking out any, any, any farther past this piece of trim because I inset the slides three quarters of an inch back. So now when I make my drawer front, when I put it on the front, it's gonna be flush with the front of this cabinet. So one drawer down, a few more to go but the install is the same for, for everyone. So there you go. Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, uh, depending on whatever time you're watching this. Uh, welcome to my channel and welcome back to my shop. Today, I wanted to kind of give an update. Uh, this was going to try to be the last installment of this build series, but it's getting a little long in the tooth. So I want to do one more part four to this video. So it's not so long. I don't want to upload a 30, 45 minute video. That's silly. This video actually covered me building the two main drawers and kind of went over how I measure and make sure that I get the correct measurements so they fit inside the openings with the hinges and whatnot. And I hope some of that made sense to you guys. I'm gonna stop it here because I really wanna go into also detail how I measure and lay out for my center drawers and how, to, and how I know where to put the drawer slides um, kind of in space. To me, it, it, it was a little bit difficult time when I started out if I was putting multiple drawers in a, in a big open space without any reference, you know, reference shelves, so to speak of. So I really wanted to kind of go over in detail how I did that. So I'm gonna make that part four, and that will be the final series of this. So that's it for this series, guys. I hope uh, you enjoyed it, and stick around for part four, and we're gonna have this thing finished up. I'm gonna light it up, put some LEDs behind the sustainers, um, get the face frames painted, get moved to the wall, get the husky moved out, and we will be done with this little project. So anyway, guys, that is it for today. It is 16 degrees here in North Texas, and we've got about three inches of snow on the ground already. And I know you guys up north are laughing at us, but uh, we're not used to this. So we're expecting another probably two to three more inches here in a few hours. So I don't know how much work's going to be done today. But anyway, that's not the point. Thanks for watching, and uh, we will see you again in part four for the final portion of this build. Thanks, guys. Take care.